everybody. It is April 6th, Monday at 10 a.m. I hope everyone's having a wonderful day. Um, probably I am right now. I'm not sure yet. Uh, just to got, let y'all know, I'm going to be sneezing a little bit. I did yard work this weekend, and I kicked up a bunch of dust. I have bad allergies, and it is pollen season here in Alabama, so yeah, that's all I'm going to say. And my dad is pretty much the same way, except it looks like he's been beat with the baseball bat right now. Well, I'm not going to go that way, but yeah. So you're going to hear, hear a little sniffling from us. Uh, it's Like I said, it's, it's allergies. We don't have uh, the virus. Okay, everybody, I know you guys, we, we've been pretty much, it's just been us three here at the house. And when we run out, we've had masks on and everything. We wash our hands, so we're fine. It's just that we are going to be probably sneezing a lot. Okay, so as promised, we said we were going to do uh, the DC Cinematic Universe. Now, to let everybody know, of course, the DC Cinematic Universe is not as well established as the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I'm waiting for a like, response. Oh, I'm waiting for a response. No, it's just now getting cranked up to use an old expression. Yeah, and that's that's one thing I thought we would talk about a little bit on it is how it got started. You know, uh, we're gonna start off with the first movie in it, which I know we we've only seen two DC movies in theaters. The, all the other ones have been at home here at the house, right? And we'll talk about those later. Um, the first one, of course, is Man of Steel. Which I'll pull up all the information. I should have, I should have had it written down right here. That's that's actually my fault. But wow, man, it still came out in 2013. Wow, I, I'm. What, what was? Oh, I remember what I was doing right, uh, right then and there. Yeah, you were working at the. Uh... I was I was doing my internship. After grad school, so yeah, I, I didn't. Twenty thirteen and fourteen, I didn't do much. You know, those first two years out of grad school, and you know, about to hit the big three zero, finally, and getting your life together, you didn't get you didn't miss out on a lot of stuff. Uh, we saw this. Was it last year? Last year. Yeah, we recorded on our DVR, and we finally got to sit down and watch it last year. Actually, I think it was about August we watched it. Yeah, sometime along in there. Yeah. Um, we were rather impressed, to say the least. There have been so many renditions of Superman over the years, going way back. All the way back to the 1940s. Yeah. Yeah, before, before I was even thought of. Yeah, and the current person who who did Superman this time was Henry uh, Calvell, and he very much he he looked like Superman. You know, of course, all all the people who you know done different variations, and this is more of a modernization of Superman. And this came about the time when they when DC did their New Fifty Two, where you know they kind of revamped. It was like. Oh, around that, you know, they have 52 going on, which is almost supposed to be like 52 different universes in the DC, you know, comic book world. And then they did Rebirth, which is like they rebooted it again. And I think they're about to reboot it again here pretty soon. I'm not sure. I, I really need to talk, to talk to Stan, and you know, since he knows all that. But, yeah, um, so th I'll have to say the first thing, is, which everyone knows, is it, it was directed by Jack Snyder, which... It has a darker feel to it. It's well, yeah, darker feel, more adult. This is not your uh, G or PG type film. This is not the uh, quintessential Boy Scout Superman. This is a little more based in reality. Yeah, he he has the Boy Scout tendencies and everything, but at the same time. He very much has where he understands where things have to get done. This is not a CW Superman. Um, I, would, I would have to say if he showed up on the CW, then all the villains would, you know, cower in fear. 
Yeah, to say the least. Yeah, nothing saying that the previous, um, I can't remember his name, the previous guy who did Superman and Superman Returns, I mean, he did a good job for the film, because that was actually, that one was based in the, um, oh, crud, what was it? Um, the Superman who got paralyzed, I can't remember his name. Christopher Reeves. Chris, Chris Reeves. Yeah, he was actually the Christopher Reeves Superman. Yeah, type. No, no, no. It actually, the story wise, it was technically yeah. Superman Five. Yeah. And then he just reprised his role again as Superman in the CW like crossover like collision thing. Um, but the, well, nothing wrong with those movies. I mean, they're a little more kid friendly, I guess, for lack of a better term. No, and you're right, and you know that's that's the big difference between them compared to the Man of Steel. I mean, Man of Steel is very much a lot darker. I mean, you start off on Krypton, and you have Russell Crowe as Jor-El, the father of, no, no, is it, yeah, Jor-El, uh, the father of Superman, and I noticed the one big difference they did was, it, it had a futuristic feel, but it, you can sit there and tell it was also very much war-torn, in a sense, uh, of, I guess, inner conflict. Well, they were on the verge of civil war, and they were... They were having intellectual civil wars. What was going to happen, or was it going to happen? Right. Uh, and was the world blowing up? Yeah. Well, it, you had that, and then you know you had all of them. They had like their armor in this one compared to uh, other incarnations, where you know they wouldn't have. They had probably their weapons. I mean, this one very much. You had like your warrior class. You could tell you had your science class and. Like the one thing that when uh, Kal El was born, Superman, is you, you kind of find out that he was the first naturally born Kryptonian. Kryptonian in eons, and usually they would take a the small genetic structure from like a skull, take a chip of that, and then form a new baby, or something. You know, something along those. I don't know exactly how they did it. But I think they mixed it in with uh, like the two current Kryptonians DNA or something. I'm not sure. That's genetic modification. Uh, I don't know whether it didn't really go into a whole lot of detail. No, it didn't go into a whole lot of detail on that, but... You just know it wasn't natural. Yeah. And it was a super glorified test tube type babies. Yeah, but, um, you know, Jor-El, you know, he put all the DNA into Superman, uh, which we'll explain about that here at the end of the podcast a little bit. But, of course, you know, General Zod, you know, he was doing his thing, and he got captured and then sent to the Phantom Zone with all of his followers. And then, you know, of course, Krypton blew up, as usual. As the story goes. Yeah, as the story goes. <laughs> And then, yeah, then I had to say, then you had like your your typical, you know, like I guess the whole thing is like Clark gl- gl- bleh, growing up with superpowers and everything. The big difference is his mom was pretty much the same in this in this film like she always is. Yeah, as in the other renditions. Yeah, I mean she was a little more grounded, but she still had that very much like you know. Do the right thing. Do the right thing. His dad... I didn't... His dad was an idiot in this one. Okay? He got mad at him because he saved... Saved some people. And, you know, because I know he was worried that Clark would get taken away and tested for all this other stuff. You know... Which I understand that. Yeah, the old government coming in and wanting to dissect them. I, I, you know, like I said, I do understand that. Oh, yeah. But at the same time, it's like you have the ability to do good. You know, he didn't. <sighs> Couldn't save everybody. We could save a lot more than what was being saved at the time. Right. You know, it's like you know his dad. You know, sit there said with the tornado was coming. He knew he was going to die if Clark didn't come and save him. But he's like, no, 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 no. 
I, I don't think anybody in the town would have faulted Clark or anything. Like, Clark's invulnerable. Clark saved us. Okay, you know, he's the hero of the town, you know. I got the impression from that he was trying to make a See, you can't save everybody. You can't even save your own dad, but, you know, that's the way the world is. Yeah, but at the same time, though, that in, in the film, and I know where Snyder was going for that in a sense, but to me, it would have been better if he tried to save him and he wasn't able to. To me, it would have been a little more heart-wrenching if he tried to save him and... Clark wasn't able to save him, but Clark held him as he was dying in his arms, saying, you can't save everybody, but you have to try your best. To me, that would have left him more, I guess, that, that would have been more impacting than, you're just going to let me die. You're just going to try to take me away. What do you think? Yeah, I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. There's... The way his dad just kind of waved him off. It's kind of a, a slap and an insult. Yeah. And then, you know, he spent years, you know, kind of going abroad. You know, he was smart and intelligent, but, you know, he was on that oil rig. Uh, you know, he saved all those people, and then he just kind of disappeared a little bit. And then... I think, well, he, I think he was just trying to hide out by being on that oil rig. He was trying to discover who he was. He That's yeah. what he was doing. Yeah. And then, of course, you know, the whole, he saves a couple of people. Okay, everybody, if you got to know, we kind of had to skip right there. My batteries died on me, so I just had to change them out real quick. So, we left off just a second ago on Clark doing his journey. Um, him coming back home. Yeah. I was going to say was, you know, because I've been talking the most. I, I didn't know if you had anything. No, not sure. No, I know his mom at this point, I remember in the film, his mom gave him like the little Superman symbol, like dagger, you know, metal thing. Showing the ship where he came from, you know. Yeah, it was kind of like a key. Yeah. Electronic key. And then it led him to Antarctica, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Antarctica. Yeah, it, it was a key and a, a directional finder. Or like we would say in the country, it was it was just it was like a bird dog led him right back to the mothership. Right now, I know. Of course, you know Jor-El came up and said who he was, and then you know he got his suit. Um. I know it kind of did the whole thing is you'll be stronger than them. You'll be like a god to them. And every rendition of Superman, for some reason, always does that whole thing. Superman is the closest thing to a god we have. That's always That has always bothered me, in a sense. Well, that's true to an extent. But it's it swell a lot of people's head, heads. And the thing that... Always got me. Yeah, he was strong and all. It's because of the yellow sun and uh, Krypton. What was it? Red sun. Red sun. And, yeah, yeah, red sun. So anybody from Krypton, if they were to land there, well, they would have the same powers. Yeah, because the radiation level would be different. Yeah, because of the yellow sun. But now, uh, get this also. Do you know if a human went over to Krypton? And, and was ra raised and everything. They would pretty much almost get the same abilities also. Because here's another thing is that they, I think they said that in one incarnation of the comic books, they said that uh, the gravity was a little heavier. What, on Krypton? Yeah. Yeah, a little, but not not significant amount. Oh, I know. It, it's it, it, Not like Jupiter. Oh, no God. You crush like an egg. Uh... And I have to admit, when you look at the suit, you don't see the the red trousers, like the red boxers on the outside. That's that's the first thing you notice. You notice it's a darker, it's a darker blue, it's a darker red. Um, it fits with the tone of what Zack Snyder was doing. Uh, I actually like the way the suit looks. What about you? 
well, it was more adult looking. It, it, it wasn't what I would say kitty fied with the, the light blue and then the red boxers on the outside. Yeah. I do know the cape was mostly CGI, especially like when he's like floating, which that's fine. I mean, uh, yeah, it doesn't look too good when you use the fans. Nah, 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 nah. Work. And then, of course, you know, Lois doing her thing, you know, being Lois, trying to find out who he is. Well, she's a good investigative reporter. That's oh, yeah. That's what her job is. Oh, yeah. You know, Perry was a oh uh, was telling her, but you know, I I want, I don't I want this. I don't want the Superman. You know, because I think around this time Clark was just now coming going over to Smallville. Uh, no, I mean not Smallville, but um, Metropolis. And you know, he was still. He was still a country boy, in it, big city. Country boy in big city, yeah. And then of course you know what 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 happens? Zod appears. The bad guy finally appears. You know, f tracking Clark, you know. Number one nemesis. Right. And then, uh. I think at this time, Lois actually made an appearance. Yeah, she actually did. Like, she actually found where, Cl you know, Superman stayed, like Clark and everything. Right. Now, I do remember. And of course, when Zod appeared, you know, Superman never fought anybody at this point. Supervillain. Everyone's always been a normal person, you know, just tap them, you know. He knew how to fly, but he, he never, he didn't have the combat experience. Yeah, well, that's true. Of course, General Zod, he'd been, he'd been around the battlefield two or three times where Superman had not been didn't have life experiences that he had. And, you know, at first, you know, the, the first time when they fight, you know, you know, they had the armor on, he didn't. Right. And it was kind of interesting in the fact that, you know, it's like, you know, they weren't used to the sun, you know, they had their, they had their protective suits. And, Clark did what he could against the what little soldiers you know little soldiers they had and then let's see if I remember correctly they had one ship on one side of the world and another ship on the polar opposite side of the world right because uh, they had um, they had to change the planet to be like Krypton's atmosphere right which to Clark was somewhat deadly because he wasn't used to it well, they were ter they were terraforming it to uh, their world. Right. And then, of course, you know the big battle happened, and you know Clark, you know, destroying one of the other bases and all that. The you want you want to tell me like what what you told me earlier? What it yeah, but I'm, you? yeah. Well, I will in a second. I just didn't I didn't uh, know how you know on this scene right here. You know. Uh. Oh, I remember is the scene where they found out that all the the Kryptonian DNA of all the other that they could use was in Clark's blood, and they didn't need Clark alive to extract it. Well, he was kind of like uh, what's the word I'm looking for? He was a walking biological encyclopedia of their world. Of their world. Right. He was way past a supercomputer because everything was encoded into the DNA that was in him. Right. And then, you know, of course, Clark being Clark, you know, he didn't know. He's just, you know, you, you can't hurt these people, you know. If I remember correctly, he tried to reason with them at first. Well, of course, you know, it's Zod. You know. Yeah. <laughs> you, can't, you can't reason with Zod. No, all he understands is force. Force, and you will kneel before me. Um, I remember, of course, in the film, you know, he did kind of, you know, take off that little face shield that they had and make him, and that was in the first encounter. He took the broke the little face shield, and, you know, he felt the radiation, and it made him sick because 
after the radiation started hitting him, his body started mutating, and getting the the sights, the smells, you know, all of his senses were overloaded. Um, but I will say, yeah, like we were talking about, the fight at the very end was very Dragon Ball Z type. I mean, <laughs> minus the fact that Dragon Ball Z, for some reason, 90% of the time the final battles happens in a dead spaced open area. Uh, I don't know how that happens. Unless it's unless it's one of the Trunk Sagas. It's one of the Trunk Sagas, for some reason, it happens in the city. Everywhere else, it happens out in the desert. Or, you know, mountains or something. Or on a, uh, on a ring. Trunks, no, he gets the dang city. That's, you know, sorry. <laughs> no, uh, that's right, it does. But it was very Dragon Ball Z-like, you know, when he was fighting, you know, punching them through the, the buildings. You, know, you saw the buildings collapsing. So much collateral damage in that film. You know, this is not the Superman I had experienced to, uh, you know... Take the fight elsewhere. Right. He was more raw emotion. Oh, da, 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 da. I mean, overall, it was good. Um, I know when Zod took the armor off, you know, he basically sat there and said, uh, I have more combat experience than you. And of course, you know, he had to snap his neck at the end or those people would have died. Yeah. And that, that kind of changed him a little bit. Well, like I said, this was not your the grandparents or your great grandparents or your parents, Superman. Well, yeah. well, I think the scream right there where Superman was screaming was because he found his, you know his people were alive and he just had to decimate his own race to save his home planet, you know, Earth, you know, his adopted planet. planet. Yeah. It says, like, hey, you can live here in peace with us, and, you know, no, we're, we're going to be assholes. We're going to subjugate you, and we're going to put you under our heel, and we're going to stomp on you. Yeah, pretty much. And, and then, then they'll say, we love it, keep doing it. Mm-hmm. And, of course, you know, he did let the U.S. government and the other governments know. It's like, I'm here to protect everybody. I'm not here to cause problems. Don't try to find me. You know, don't try to find out where I live. Or hurt my family or anything, you know. Don't mess with me, I don't mess with you. Right. The film overall was real good, and I understand it was a good setup. Uh, I wish... And this is getting into the light and like, you know, a little bit into Wednesday's podcast, which we'll talk about, you know, like the next film... You know, I felt like I felt like this was a good setup for the DC un- cinematic universe because around this time, I think you you're you're getting close to having Avengers. I think Avengers came around. Let's see, when did Avengers come out? Okay, so the Avengers came out a year prior to this one. Well, it was still a good setup. Oh yeah, and uh, if Warner Brothers didn't rush anything, it could, it could have been really good, and that's something we'll talk about. Yeah, they were just trying to pump out content without realizing the consequences in the long run. Oh yeah, and you know. Of course, you know, Warner Brothers, that, you know, the, the, the marketing executives don't know what they're doing. You know, I'm, I'm sorry. That's what I'm going to say. Now, I do know, like I said, overall, the film was really good. I know Henry Calvin, he reprised his role as Superman and the, the sequel film, Justice League. And that's the only films he's done so far. You know, he's supposed to do another Superman film, but as of right now, I think he just did the Witcher series on Netflix. Uh,. That's the reason why he couldn't make the cameo, the cameo in Shazam. That's why it was just a, this somebody who had the same body frame as him, you know. Because uh, he was he was in mid production, he couldn't, you know, just drop what he was doing. Mm-mm, not not for like a what a ten second cameo. Yeah. 
you know, I don't know if he's going to do any more Superman. I, I kind of, I really hope he does because I liked him. I, I do like him as Superman. But overall, I mean, the, the this first film in the was, I would have to say, it's good, but some of the other films were, are way better. Well, Superman has been done so many times. How many different ways can you do it? Mm, uh, I, 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 you never heard of this one? Never heard of uh, Red Sun? Actually, I have. I've heard of it, but I've never seen it. Well, it was a comic book, but they just made an animated yes. movie uh, about it. It was Superman if he went to if he landed in Russia. I'm actually being serious. I'm not even joking. Well, that's no another universe. Oh, yeah. Well, DC's, like, their whole animated stuff is actually really, really good. But, oh, let's see. I don't know. What, what, what can you take away from the film? What do I think of what now? What can you take away from the film? Well, to me, the whole thing was a setup, basically. You know, I was wondering, well, okay, now what are they going to do next? That's what I was left with. Yeah, well, I mean, they didn't introduce any of his classic villains in it. I mean, you didn't, Lex Luthor was not introduced in this film, which that was fine. That didn't bother me one bit. Sorry, everybody. But I think the introduction of Zod was, was more so... Uh, had a bigger impact in the film, in my estimation, than in the other films where they just touched upon it. I mean, I wish Zod would have stayed around a little bit more, but I understand why he was a one-and-done villain in this one, because it was supposed to be, you know, to set Superman's like, hey, there's people like this, they could be, you know, there's worse people like this also, you know. And the the duality of also of him having to learn how to balance between being Clark and being Superman, as well as yeah, you know, he was definitely walking a tightrope. Yeah, and you know his mom. I had to say his mom did a lot more in this film to really help push him in the right direction. You know, mm -hmm. and of course you know that it's like as. That's always the whole thing is, you know, like, you know, the mom can always, you know, can always help steer the son a lot better than sometimes the father can. She reinforces what the father taught. Does that make, make sense, Dad? Yeah, it does. She puts her own little spin on it. And the roles are usually reversed when it's a girl because, you know, girls yeah. listen to their dads a lot faster than they listen to their moms. And that's all I want to say. <laughs> no, let's not chase that rabbit. No, we're not going to chase that rabbit hole. No, no, no. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Okay. Um. So, on Wednesday, everybody, we will be talking about Batman versus Superman, and that's going to be a fun one. I yeah. ha I have so many things on that one. That <laughs> I like. I say I enjoyed Man of Steel. Yeah. The, the, the next one, I, oh man. Interesting. You know, the bad thing is we still haven't watched Justice League yet. Oh, no. That's the only film we haven't watched yet. That and the new Birds of Prey movie, which I'm really not really eh to go see. I, I'm just nah. Eh. Eh. I'll wait till it comes out like later. And it ain't because it's, you know, a girl's film or anything. That don't bother me. Like, I freaking love Wonder Woman. I'm looking forward to Wonder Woman too. Well, I thought it did a real good job, personally. Yeah. Oh, I know. Well, that, that'll be the that'll be on... That'll be Friday's talk as Wonder Woman. Man. Yeah, actually, something came out before Wonder Woman. What? Aquaman. No, Aquaman came out last year. That's right. We just didn't... Okay. Yeah, you're right. My bad. We saw Aquaman first. Yeah. 
And that that's the first minute that takes that that takes place after Justice League, I think, is the way it's supposed to. Yeah. And yeah, yeah we saw we saw that because remember our, our friend Ariel wanted to get a group of us for her birthday because she really likes Aquaman. She she's in love with Jason Momoa. Uh, <laughs> like, well, it's, we'll get into that later. Yeah, it's a good movie. It, yeah, but no, no. Uh, so Batman and Superman will be on Wednesday, everybody, and then uh, uh, then we'll do Wonder Woman, and then next week we'll do Suicide Squad. Um, then the following Wednesday will be Aquaman, and then Shazam. And that'll be all, all the all the ones we've seen. Because that's there really there ha, there hasn't been a lot of DC movies. No, I don't know what their deal is. I mean, you know, with the with the virus going on right now, you know. Speaking yeah. of which, everybody, if you don't do not know, uh, and I know this is not DC related, I don't know when uh Wonder Woman two is going to come out. We'll make an announcement of that just to keep some people heads up. But I do know Marvel's Black Widow has been moved to November 9th this year. So there's that. That's all I, uh, I'm going to say on that one. So, like I said, Wednesday, 10 a.m. will be our next podcast, everybody. I hope everyone is wearing their masks when they go out. They're heeding the orders of no ga- uh, major gatherings. Uh, we know it's a hard time, everybody. Trust me. I'm I'm itching to get out a little bit more than the the backyard and the front yard <laughs> and the house and then going to Dollar General uh just to get some basic supplies but you know we got to keep everything down wash your hands keep yourself clean Lysol spray or whatever you got to do uh the, 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 be proper take your vitamins take your vitamins and don't be a jerk please I mean I've read I've had friends who I have messaged me said I had a horrible day. Uh, I had to stop somebody from assaulting somebody at work because we didn't have this. I had somebody try to spit on somebody. I mean, just guys, just chill. Yes, please. Quit being a bunch of. Uh, I would say Sorry my, about that. Terminology. A bunch of little hooligans. I wasn't going to say hooligans. I was going to say quit being a bunch of little brats, everybody. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry about that, everybody. That is my. Uh, that is my phone. I got people uh, messaging when that was supposed to be on mute. So with that said, everybody, uh, we will see you on Wednesday at 10 a.m. If you guys like what you hear, please subscribe to us here at Nerds with the Cause on YouTube. You can also find us on Facebook. We will be having more content coming out soon, especially when the convention season kicks back up. And we can all move around again. So with Yay. that, yeah, with that said, everybody, we are out.